the point is it's the oldest story which is i want to stick to an iphone because of third party apps like they, there's certain third third party apps that i love and want and the thing we always say to apple at least for me is still true i like i, I there's it's apps that 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 when I think about switching, there's a couple apps that just pop into mind. I'm like, I, I would feel sad to sort of get what those. What would I Overcast do without Flighty? Network is another one. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of my big takeaways from WWDC is that if the iPhone continues down this road of incorporating ChatGPT, there's no way I'm leaving the iPhone. Like, like, like I don't want to switch to Gemini. Like, I want mm. to keep using chat gpt chat gpt is quickly becoming the most important app it has all that history i drove back into a conversation this weekend that i had like four or five months ago i because i knew there was a lot of context there i continued it because i was back on a particular topic that i was there like i don't want to be jumping around to different models and that sort of thing and maybe perplexity does stuff that chat gpt doesn't but i'd rather just wait for chat gpt to do it and then yeah. instead of like bothering to switch around now again as part of my job i still try all the other ones and switch around but i, I think for any normal consumer that sense is going to be stronger and on one hand yes theoretically apple is running a risk by having you know increasing their dependency on a third party but I think we underrate, even though, again, that's why I bring it up that I brought up last podcast. We underrate the extent to which Apple can draft on ChatGPT by, mm. by being the preeminent platform for using ChatGPT. Um, it's, it's, it's a big deal, and everyone is going to be facing that. Google is going to be facing that. Anthropic is facing it. And Perplexity is going to be facing that. And, and if Apple hundred percent, I'm going to, we're just going to buy Perplexity, cut out chat gpt and push perplexity for the yeah, next 10 like, years yeah, maybe i'll give android a, a shot oh interesting the apple, you <laughs> exactly be <laughs> careful what you acquire apple. by the way i was uh doing some cooking this weekend oh boy does. and uh you know using of course using chat gpt all the time and really trying to think through what's the best way to use this in the kitchen more effectively and i was researching you know is there an ipad i actually have a, there's a spot in my kitchen like could i get like a 24 inch imac sort of mounted up there like okay. that, that would be pretty sweet and i realized it's really tricky to get a good combination visual and voice interaction which is a what i want and i want that's that what i was wondering good. are you going to be talking to the ipad that's mounted in your kitchen above your stove no, I need Johnny Ive to get a move on and ship whatever product we're shipping sooner. <laughs> okay, there there's you a go. clear hole. There really is. Family of devices, no, there, man. There One for new... the kitchen. Let's no, make it I, happen. I like doing projects, sort of X Y. In this combination, it it is kind of like the 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 Amazon products or the the Google Home ones with the screen mm -hmm. and talking. But but I also want input, but I want the visual and I want to be able to talk to it, like. Uh, there's a hole here there really really is and, and it's not super clear uh like how to solve the call it ai in the kitchen problem again yeah. there's ways to do it you can use your phone you can use an ipad you can use a mac you can get like alexa's promising to help with this google's promising to help with this but again remember i want a chat gpt one like that that's that that's where i'm in and it, i don't know it just it's been a I, I guess I've been thinking about tech more than I realized this weekend. <laughs> Just like, how well, can this I get takes more me back to two GPT years ago. In my life. This takes me back to two years ago with the Vision Pro in the kitchen. Joanna Stern was cooking with the Vision Pro on, and people were like, well, maybe this is how people are going to be cooking in the future here. But I like your no, that, vision no, actually, better than the Vision Pro idea. No, that would be awesome. Like if it was comfortable and you had like the 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 augmented, like that would be the comfortable idea. and not alienating to the rest of your family that's sitting there <laughs> while, while Dad's on the Vision Pro in the kitchen. <laughs> um, I'm not going to be cooking the Vision Pro on, but there is a there there's there are just you think about it, there's all these things you do where you want to look up information and you want to be able to reference something but you want to be working on something at the same time and uh again there's there's lots of products out there that have bits and pieces of this but yeah. uh no i don't feel anyone's truly put it together to date i mean part of the problem i've i've had like the google voice home things with a screen in the kitchen before and it, it's like it, all these get too locked onto one modality like that's mm -hmm. voice only right 
and then a computer just assumes you have a keyboard and trackpad and the 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 touch devices assume you're using touch like we're we're actually struggling with multimodality to a certain extent and, and i think it probably is all the voice stuff is too voice centric what we need is voice and this i don't know I, well just, no and vision vision in should market, enhance think, the functionality here because i and look i'm speaking as someone who's a c plus to c minus in the kitchen and when i'm struggling i would love to be able to show a photo of what i'm working with totally. or, or yep. have the computer look at whether it's cooked properly or not or, or and suggest and make suggestions on that basis and that should be possible over the next 10 or 15 years. And that, I think, hasn't really been that viable from a multimodality standpoint over the last 10 or 15 years. So it's exciting, whether it's the Vision Pro or OpenAI's mystery well, device. Well, that's the thing. To really get this, it has to be the device maker doing it because you want the deep – like one of the ideas I saw mooted for the OpenAI device that I think would actually fit with this perfectly, which is – the phone is great because you do get all that multimodality. It has a mic, it has a speaker, it has a screen, it has a camera. Mm -hmm. It does have all the pieces. The problem is, uh, and this is why, again, this remains why I think Android, if they're ever going to really make a breakthrough in the premium market, this is the opportunity because Google has a good, a decent AI and they have Android and they yep. can theoretically start to tie this all together. There is a bit where it's still not perfect for cooking because, you know, I want my hands free or whatever. And I would actually like a bigger screen. The one good thing is I would love to be able to pull up YouTube videos on command, like very consistently mm. and like show, show something or other. Like that's that would really be great. Yeah. YouTube, or, or like very, the very valuable in be. the kitchen. Yeah. yeah, for sure. For sure. Like doing woodworking or, or all these sort of different things that you might want to do uh, or putting stuff together or fixing stuff. YouTube. Like Google has so many pieces here. Like that's why that's why they're such a frustrating company. It's like they, <laughs> it's like we talk about Google in the context of TV and sports. It's like they have everything. They should deliver on this. And it's like, what are they doing? It's it, it's well, they're... and YouTube is so valuable in so many ways. Just as you're talking there, I'm thinking YouTube has saved my ass over and over again as a homeowner when different things pop up and yeah. I just go to YouTube and watch a six or seven minute video to figure out what the hell I'm going to do. Whether well, especially it's something now, Google with a water search will or... jump to like an exact moment in a YouTube video. So you need to watch all the preamble. It's and great. Just, like, cut straight to the, <laughs> it's you know. really great. So yeah, integrate that into yeah, a mystery device. After all. But, but, but the, one of the proposals I saw for this is basically, it's like almost like, I can't, I can't remember who, who proposed this, but it's like a puck. Mm -hmm. And the point of the puck is providing multimodality to the computer. Because that was the, the striking things about the video is I think Sam Altman in the introductory video with Johnny, I was talking about using a Mac. And I I, I remember I picked up on that. I'm like, I prefer using AI with a real computer also. Sure. Right. And, and I was <clears> – <throat> I was anchored on like the typing and, and also the big screen. But I think the idea of, of this puck is can you add the multimodality to your computer seamlessly? So you have like the voice input and the, you know, and the, the, you pick it up and it's a camera or you could sort of like, like move it around, but mm -hmm. still leverage other things as the output. That's exactly what I was thinking about in the kitchen. Like, that'd be amazing if I could have like a computer there and have something that seamlessly accepts voice input or whatever, and it syncs up to the open AI server. So it doesn't have to get gunk down and trying in in a computer trying to like navigate who has priority who doesn't because they have the mm -hmm. whole sort of back and syncing service i can pick it up and point it at the pot does this look right like uh I that's don't know. what we want yeah there's, spatial there's something there. awareness there's, there's really something there yeah <laughs> suddenly I mean, the computer has video awareness and audio awareness i mean that does make sense and, what well, were you cooking this weekend uh, just just uh, just some, some pasta sauce. It wasn't that complicated. <laughs> okay, no, it was a it little come No, but well, my my wife does that was one that I think is actually really good, and she does a few things that are different. Um, it's a little sort of like Asian fusion esque. Uh, ah, okay. And so she sent me the list of ingredients, and then she told me on the phone like like what to do. And but I totally forgot what she told me, so I just dumped the ingredients into <laughs> ChatGPT. I'm like, my wife makes a sauce doing this. 
what's probably the order that he's supposed to do all this sort of stuff in. Um, it did a good job. I think it turned out pretty well. So uh, There you go. So not quite the old-fashioned way, but, you know, halfway between the past and the future was Ben this weekend in the kitchen recreating his wife's sauce. Um, yeah, love but, to see it. But, but the I don't know. The, like, there, there is – we're, we're far off track. Um, all that to say, if Apple – I feel like Apple – Okay, we'll buy perplexity. It feels like backsliding. What, like, mm -hmm. I, I, it's just so. I said this before it it happened that Apple should partner more deeply with OpenAI and, and let other folks sort of plug in. But when they had the visual intelligence, oh, I did that this weekend. I took a picture of a utility box, uh, and I'm like, "What is this utility box for?" I was like walking around the neighborhood. And then I took a picture and I pasted it into ChatGPT and it gave me an answer. And yeah. oh, that's exactly what they announced. I could just press the camera button on the side and send it to ChatGPT immediately and get an answer. I'm like, that's gonna make me want to buy another iPhone. Like, like, uh, and so, and this sort of competition with ChatGPT having such mindshare in the consumer market versus Google having all the pieces and can they put it together? It's it's really just striking. Like, like what that is and, and to see who can deliver on that. And, um, anyhow, no, the, I, I guess well, the point of the perplexity question is I've managed to spend 20 minutes talking about anything but perplexity. And that might be a problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A red flag there for perplexities prospects, but also the risk for Apple becoming levered on open AI would be that over the long haul, Google, like in theory, strategically speaking, if you go back like 10 or 15 years, the reason they didn't want to become levered on an app like that is that then competitors could offer that app and people would just care about the app and wouldn't necessarily care about what device they were accessing it on. But it helps that their chief competition and right now only competition in the smartphone market definitely won't offer open AI and totally. chat GPT. But like and Google so, is like Apple back in the day and like open AI could be like Intel to like Apple being windows. Right. Exactly. Like, like yeah. they should be like, like yeah, they should be like best buds. Uh, and you know, and but they will be Johnny for Ivango a time. Complicates it. Uh, exactly. Least, <laughs> <but yes. laughs> That's the wild card down the road.